Assalamu alaikum, good evening, and welcome to another program of Health is Wealth. I am your host, Shabnam Riaz. Today's topic is a very, very interesting one. It is something that, you know, at some time in the other, everyone would have experienced this. It's something that is preventable as well. Uh, we're not really on the lookout for how to prevent these injuries. Today, we're going to talk about burns. And, um, you know, God forbid if this happens to someone and it's, it's, it's a really, it's a, it's a bad case, it is life altering. So, so many things that we talk about on our program are, you know, things that we can prevent. So that's, we're also going to talk about the management, how these things happen and how we can prevent accidents as well. Now, uh, in the studio, we are very lucky to have experts with us and we have uh, Professor Dr. Tariq Iqbal, who's consultant, plastic and burns and reconstructive surgeon, chair, uh, the director of the Burn Care Center in PIMS. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Thank you very much for inviting. Thank you very much. And seated next to you, Dr. Tariq, we have Dr. Mariam Hashim Ubashir, who is a consultant psychiatrist. Thank you, Mariam, for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so um, before we go on to speak to our guests and have their expert advice, let's have a look at this report. Burns continue to be a major environmental factor responsible for significant mortality in developing countries. There are many types of burns, but three major types include First degree burns. First degree burns are considered mild as compared to other burns. They result in pain and redness of the dermis, which is the outer layer of the skin. Second degree burns affect the dermis and epidermis. They cause pain, redness, swelling and blisters. Third degree burns go through the dermis and affect deeper and deeper to the tissues. They result in white or blackened chaired skin that may be numb. What causes burns? Dry heat such as fire, wet heat such as steam or hot liquids, radiation, friction, heated objects, the sun, electricity or chemicals can cause burns. Thermal burns are the most common among the burns. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we hope you found that informative. Dr. Tariq, if we, you know, start with you. What exactly is a burn and when should a person seek medical advice? Yeah, uh, burns are very, I mean, you can say mutilating kind of injury. Mm. And we say burns can happen to anyone, anywhere, anytime. But when they ha happen, then one realizes that how grave or how severe the injury is. Mm. Mostly the people having these uh, common, very common burns which we are receiving, they are all common domestic home, home side accidents. Mm. And uh, especially important is the pediatric burn. Mm. Children below the age of five years. Now, for the last 10 years, we have treated about more than 77,000 patients at our center. Mm. And uh, among these, more than 70% are pediatric burns below the age of Huge five years. Number. Huge number. And all these burns are preventable because Imagine. these all kids they are playing in their home and mm. they suffer these domestic accidents mm. from the kitchen or mm. from the fireplaces or from the heaters. What is the main situation that you encounter the most where this has happened? Uh, most common is the kitchen accidents. Okay. Because spillovers are the immersion burns. Mm. Children, they are coming, playing, and they just fell into the hot, hot container containing food or something, mm. water or mm -hmm. boiling water, or just the spillovers. Mm. And uh, you see, in children, the percentage of burn is very important. Uh, it's also important in the adults, but in children, just 10% of the body surface area can be fatal. I mean, that is life-threatening. Mm. Uh, the rest of the things are the mutilation and other things, they are the later on. Mm. But first thing is to save the life and then to cure the patient to the level that he feels a normal again. Mm. So. Uh, most of the time, uh, patient reports late to uh, our center, okay. and that, then we are keep on treating the complications. Mm. But my message is that whenever this happens, immediately rush to the hospital. Right, yeah. uh, and as you just said, it's a very important point that you just made, is that first of all, the prevention, prevention. and then the second thing about too much of a time delay. Exactly. What complications do you find then? Yeah, exactly. Now, you see, f just for example, that if it is a first degree or second degree burn, 
if it, we start treating that burn in first hour, or we, we, we say that a golden first hour. Mm. So all the complications can be treated and that patient can be uh, absolutely normal again. Mm. And after six months or a year, nobody can say that he was burned. But if that patient is reporting us after 24 hours, that first degree or the second degree burn, converts into third degree and then I the complications see. start. So that is very important, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, that is very important advice that uh, uh, Dr. Tariq is giving us right now. It's the time of 24 exactly. hours that once you've had a burn, you must come and seek medical attention because then the situation deteriorates, deteriorates. as you're saying. Okay. And then we keep on treating the complications and we have to excise the wound, we have to do the plastic surgeries, which they call the grafting and all that, mm -hmm. and then the marks and the stain, they remain there for the rest of the life. Mm. But if we can treat them uh, within the first hour or the first two hours mm -hmm. before the complication has started, and again, if we have treated those all those things with the modern ways of uh, these biological dressings mm -hmm. and the modern advanced dressings and the synthetic skin, which mm -hmm. we are doing at our center, right. so the, the results are excellent. Right, right. Okay, uh, Dr. Miriam, let's turn to you now. What are the psychological implications for somebody who has suffered a burn that changes their life? Uh, Shabnam, the most important thing that we need to acknowledge is that usually the medical care and the physical care of the burns is what overshadows the emotional challenges that a person with burns faces. Mm. Because this is, a, as Dr. Sir mentioned, it's the most debilitating and deals with a lot of excruciating pain mm. and long-term as well as acute complications and sequelae, mm. both psychiatric and um, psychosocial treat problems and biological treatments. Mm. So we need to emphasize on an early management and early intervention exactly. in terms of psychological first aid as well as uh, physical therapy and nursing care as because well. Because that's something that usually gets overlooked, isn't it? Absolutely. Because um, everybody would be uh, focusing on the physical aspect exactly. and the external you know what you can see is going on and uh, many people forget to address the inside as well what's going on inside I mean, of course, a person. When you're talking about priorities me medical management physical treatment resuscitation mm. comes at first mm. but right after psychological first aid should sort of come in Mm. And we need to understand that and we need to acknowledge that. Mm. So The importance of that. Yeah. And in fact, you know, that would make such a difference in the healing yeah, of, exactly. of a patient. Exactly. Um, some of the burn treatments, are they painful? How is pain managed? And yeah, exactly. Uh, they are very painful. Mm -hmm. The burns are uh, the wounds which are extremely painful. Mm. And to overcome that pain, one has to use the narcotic analgesic because with the routine analgesia, you cannot control that pain. Mm. But luckily, now we have all those kind of advanced dressings, although they are a bit costly, but uh, Alhamdulillah, they are now available at our center and everywhere. Mm. That by applying those dressings within minutes, within five minutes, the pain is gone. Okay. So that is again the one of the advantage of those dressings. Mm. But otherwise, where they, this is not available, Controlling a pain, especially in a partial thickness burn, is extremely difficult thing. Mm. And that is leading to pa pa uh, leading sometime patients into the shocks as well. And uh, that, uh, that is the most difficult part in, in the initial treatment. Okay. But with, with the advent of these advanced dressings, we can control these things uh, in, 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 a, in a better way mm. now. And uh, one thing I want to add, uh, uh, what Dr. Mariam is saying, that uh, in female patients, especially when we see the primary areas are burned. We call primary areas face, mm. hands, and other body areas. That area are or, more yeah. exposed. Mm. Then the psychological implications trauma. and mm. trauma is, 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 is very high. Absolutely. And there, those are those cases which must reach the specialized centers uh, as early as possible. Because mm. as early we can start the treatment, mm. we can prevent their cosmetics, uh, appearance okay. and so, all So for somebody who's sense. been burned on the face, will yeah. they then go to a cosmetic surgeon or will no, they? No, they, they, they have to come to the burn center because okay. first we have to treat the, now in the burn center, al along with treating the wound, mm. we have to uh, I mean, keep in mind all these things, uh, the cosmetic aspects as well. Mm. Because if we are using all these advanced techniques, synthetic skins and biological dressing and all those things, then the cosmetics results are very excellent. Mm. But if we are not using this thing and treatment is delayed for hours, and then it, 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 it can uh, turn into a scar which cannot be cured. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, um, Dr. Maryam, tell us, you know, how do you sensitize 
family members as well, because yes. it's when one person has gone through something so traumatic, and as uh, Dr. Tariq said, if it's one of those primary areas, then that person is going to be an altered Absolutely. person at many levels. Yes. So it's not just the victim, the patient, it's also the people around them. So how does that? Uh, Shabnam, before I answer that question, which is very important and pertinent, I would like to tell you that we divide uh, patients which co who come with burns into three basic stages. Mm. The first, which is the critical and resuscitative phase. Okay. At that phase, um, if I talk about psychological impact, mm. uh, the patient is mostly in denial or repression phase, in which mm. they don't want to talk about it, they don't want to admit, because they are in, in a lot of pain, and there's a lot of excruciating exactly. pain, and uh, so people are in denial. And we do not want to uh, sort of get, do away with these primitive reflexes that people have mm. because these are mechanisms defense mechanisms which help the patients and the families cope mm. so this is not the stage in which depression and anxiety and the comorbidities come in mm. it's the second acute phase in which basic rehabilitation starts mm. and depression anxiety post-traumatic stress disorder mm. sleep disorders they set in in the second stage mm. after the patient is done with the very critical stages of uh, as docs have mentioned the dressing and preventing complications right. and then what you're talking about the role of the family comes in the long-term rehabilitation which is the third stage of the burns okay with regards to psychological impact mm. that is when taking the family on board is very important mm. because people with burns especially burns on the face and in exposed areas mm. like Dr. Tariq mentioned, mm. they develop what we call body disfigurement and body image disturbance and body dysmorphophobia. Mm. So for a woman, body image and even for children is the most important thing mm. in the mirror when you're looking mm. at yourself. Mm. The confidence that you feel, the self-esteem that comes up is all with the body image that you have, yes. external body image. So external body image and internal body image are very closely linked to each other. Mm. So dealing with the family at that time and dealing with the uh, children, uh, the parents of the children mm. undergoing such burn injuries mm. is very important. And then, of course, there are different techniques that we help, non-pharmacological and even pharmacological interventions that we need to follow okay. to deal with it. Explaining to the, uh, nobody wants to hear that, oh, you're lucky that at least it's just an arm and it's not the face yes, or it's exactly. just, a, no, or it's just the breast and it's not True. the leg. Mm. Nobody wants to hear that. Of that course. is not a part of grief counseling. Mm. So taking it slowly and help them cope is the most mm. important the choice part. of words is very, very important, important especially the when you're dealing don'ts. with somebody Absolutely. because sometimes you know you feel that uh, people uh, in our part of the world sometimes lack that empathy and the yeah when reassurance you, is very very, exactly, very important exactly exactly yeah. and instead of building someone up at a difficult instead time of sympathy, they should be empathy yeah. basically exactly yeah, and, and and very artfully done uh, dr Dyke, okay. tell us about you know your experience your vast experience in this field what has been you know one of your most challenging surgeries or where you've really felt for somebody and and wished that this had not happened and yeah. it was completely preventable yeah it's a very important uh, question you raise uh, and uh, i want to mention it specially and want to stress it high voltage electric burns okay uh, you will be amazed though we have the shortage of the electricity and all those things but mm. we have the highest incidence of high voltage electric burn injuries in this region, Southeast Asia. I see. And uh, numbers are enormous. I mean, mm. these high tension lines, they are passing through the uh, small communities, small housing uh, societies and all that. Children are these young girls. They are just on the roof spreading the clothes after mm. washing. Mm. Or the mm. children, are, they are playing with the kites and all those things. Mm. And they just caught up in the magnetic field and they just end up with the, I mean, severe one. If, if, if the, the life is, has been saved, then they end up with the amputation. Either we have to cut one arm or the sec both arm mm -hmm. or the one arm or the one leg. And that kid or that young fellow is, 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 is the liability for the rest of the life, for mm -hmm. the family, for the society, for mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. And incidence is so high and it's so painful. I mean, you mm -hmm. see, you can't do anything except that you, you have to amputate, you have to cut that arm, I cut that of, of, of a young child, five, seven years old. And uh, we, 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 we raised so many voices and all those things that uh, this should be, I mean, somehow uh, can be prevented because this, this the authorities are the WAPDA authorities, mm. are this, uh, I mean, uh, the community authorities, mm. they have to take the action uh, on uh, this. Are, are you talking about the areas which are densely populated and you have all the wires? Uh, High voltage, wires? 11,000 kV. Ah. That has got a very massive electromagnet field. Okay. Uh, in which they just 
catch up the I mean the uh -huh. uh, any, any particle or anything. Right. And so how does it happen when you're saying you know women washing clothes and putting them on the on the lines? They, they, and they, I mean, I, I, either they're the wire of metallic thing or touching any metallic thing, and they just caught up in that mm. magnetic field, and mm. then the current is passing from that. Because right. the voltage is so high that injury is, and they just burn out the, all the things that become gangrene in a, just a minute. Right, that, that, that so is that, that is the most, most, uh, I mean, tragic. painful and tragic and, mm. and, and, and difficult thing to mm. treat. And then that, that is the liability for the rest of the life. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, initially, uh, doctor was saying, that, you see, the, now the burns is uh, uh, as uh, the, initially it was thought that just healing the wound is the treatment of burn. But then the concept of these burn center and these psychological, uh, because treating a burn patient, you need to have so many uh, persons, psychologists, uh, ergotherapists, mm. psychotherapists, so psychologists. The support system to working together. Because now what they define is that treating burn is not only the healing the wounds, mm. it's the reintegration. Mm. Reintegration into the society. Mm. I mean, the person as useful and as good before the injury was mm -hmm. should be mm -hmm. as good and as useful after the injury. And that is the reintegration. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing on which we are trying from the day one when the patient yes, comes to them, Any disorder that you have, any disease yeah. or illness, there's always a biopsychosocial etiology. Mm -hmm. the causation and a biopsychosocial management. Mm -hmm. So as Doxa mentioned, a multi-collaboration between exactly. medical specialists, burn specialists, psychiatrists, psychologists, mm -hmm. uh, rehabilitation, vocational therapists. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the key to treating a person to, as Doxa mentioned very rightly, reintegration in the society, mm -hmm. right. rehabilitation. But how, how, how welcoming is our society for people who are different, for people who have, you know, how, how do you not, how do you educate them? How do you get the message across? What should be done? Uh, uh, Shabnam, it's uh, very rightly pointed out by you that there's a lot of stigma in our society to people with learning disabilities, people with body disfigurements, mm. and there's a lot of even labeling. Even a slight difference. Mm. I mean, with these are major differences. You know, with even a slight difference where you're deviating from the so-called norm in any sort of way Absolutely. will put you under scrutiny. It, so, yeah. How? In our society, yeah. even yeah. color, race, these exactly. are stereotypes which are labeled. Mm. So something like a disfigurement or a physical yeah. or mental handicap mm. is, I think, the greatest source of stigma and it should be dealt with and uh, this, it's the greatest challenge for the society uh, at large and the world at large as yes, well. Yes, true. Dr. Thayer, do you think that the media is doing enough in, in promoting these sort of, you know, awareness programs and uh, educating the public, especially because our channel is an English channel, so we cater to a specific uh, part of, of, the, of the nation. Uh, but, you know, other channels as well, are they doing enough? Are they investing in, 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 in these uh, sort of... Uh, uh, I believe, uh, but rather I would say it's not. Hmm. Because we have to create awareness about these all accidents and emergencies hmm. at a very larger level, starting from the school level, Mm. We do not doing anything uh, at, at, at the school levels mm. because from there you can teach the children a very good I mean, preventive measures and then those, those things can be implemented into the society as well. And same is the role for the media. Mm. I mean, teaching, I think it's our, our uh, making awareness campaigns or sort of those things, they mm. are needed. Mm. Because then the people will realize that we have to put these safety measures in our house. Mm. You see, if we, if, if we see how many people are coming to visit our house from the authorities mm. to check our electrical appliances, mm. our gas appliances, mm. are they are made of standard things or mm. not, or if their safety measures are being observed or not. Mm. Because if we, if we put a little bit of uh, effort, effort on these things, we can prevent a lot that, of accidents. That is so true. It yeah. is all about the effort. Yeah. The extra, just taking the extra sort of a, a step. Uh, why are we, Mariam, you tell me this, why are we so comfortable with this, this phrase that, you know, I, 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 I hear so much, kuch nahi hota. <laughs> why, why? I mean, how I do we get out of this? Allah ki marzi. Yeah, Allah ki marzi. Koi baat nahi. It's okay. I know. mean, that is also a very pertinent question because most of the burn injuries that we have, especially in the rural areas, are unreported. Mm -hmm. The reason yeah. being that they start blaming in or, on possessions and jinns and being, you know, manhus is mm -hmm. the word that they use. Mm -hmm. So they don't want, you want to report it to the authorities that this is exactly. happening. Mm -hmm. And then as Doxa mentioned, we haven't streamlined every, any authorities to come and actually mm -hmm. check, especially in the rural areas, exactly. even mm -hmm. in the urban areas. Yeah, yeah, in fact, you see 
potential hazards, hazards, just an accident waiting to happen. And if you see it and you point it out to somebody, usually the response you get is, you know, is that the, the, the assumption is, don't worry so much. If there's an accidental spin in the kitchen, the assumption is that it's done by the in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's assumed. I mean, uh, I've once uh, suffered burns on the leg through hot water. Mm. And uh, I realized that, you know, okay, we have an exposure and we don't mind talking about it. Mm. The people out there who don't want to talk about they it just mm. because of being labeled as a victim of burns. All right, we'll come back to the topic today. It's a very interesting one. We're going for a break. Don't change the channel. Okay, welcome back to the program. I am certainly getting a lot of information from our experts here today. Uh, Dr. Tariq, tell me, what are the different classifications of burns? You have, you know, your, your burn from, um, from, from steam, which I think is called scalding. Yeah, major and classification, we usually say this is either it's a flame burn uh -huh. or a hot liquid burn okay. or a contact burn. Mm -hmm. Then there are electrical burn, and in electrical burn there are again two types, low voltage which are domestic household accidents, they are not that severe, and mm -hmm. then the high voltage which I have already explained. Mm -hmm. And then there are chemical burns, okay. which, which commonly people know about as acid burn. Yes. Uh, no, there's a, there's a sort of myth or misunderstanding or misinformation you can say uh, uh, that there are a lot of these cases are happening in our country, it's not true. Mm -hmm. Because if we compare our data with the other countries, even for say, if we compare it with the UK, we have far less number of acid burn victims in our country as they are in UK. That but is something that is very, yeah, exactly. that's amazing information. I mean, yeah, because exactly. uh, I would have thought I, the, the general member of, the, of our country, of the public, wouldn't think so. Exactly. That, that is because our media, if anything happening in I mean, Muzaffargarh, and they will, exp I mean, uh, breaking news and all those yeah. things, they will, they will put it in, in that way. But you never see any such news in the Western media. True. Because this is their policy. But about a month ago, there, were, there was a report in the UK about some uh, yeah, acid exactly. attacks. Uh, that is because place. of the social media. Okay. And they have to. But mm. otherwise, most of the, uh, these news we receive from social media are from the technical audience, mm. are the treating surgeons and all those but not the general media, okay. you won't see anything like that. But in our country, I can say you that this is, the, uh, we have all the statistics or uh, data and everything, hmm. that it is 0.26% of the total burn. In last 10 years, we have treated 146 chemical burn out of 77,000 total burns. Hmm. No, imagine. So you, you can see the, the figure. Uh, but uh. these are criminal burn crimes of course. Uh, like any other crime, of course. it's a crime, yes. it's a mutilation, it's mm. a very severe injury mm -hmm. and uh, all those, I mean, they get some sort of uh, uh, sympathy because of this uh, media background mm -hmm. and all that. And uh, most of the time the story is the same because that is again, the people are very interested in what is and the story. And many a time the, yeah. the story is distorted or Distort. publicized. Yeah. Or exactly. exactly. That's so, okay. and their treatment again, if they come early, we have the uh, pictures, data and everything mm. that if they come early, they can be a normal person again mm. when treated properly and when mm. the uh, grafting is done and all is those. The it's, treatment it's very expensive? Treatment. treatment is expensive, no mm. doubt. Uh, but here at PIMS, we are providing all the treatment free of cost. Even mm. uh, we are applying this uh, synthetic skin, which is mm. very costly. Mm. And for children, it's very free and uh, absolutely free mm. and uh, for these kind of burns mm. uh, where there is a lot of mutilation mm. we are also providing all these things free of cost mm. and we have so many patients which which recovered normally and they are now functioning and working in their society are you getting normally. a large influx of patients from around the country yeah Who exactly because there is no uh, such facilities uh, in the country this is the only 
uh, state of the art, you can say. We, mm. we do have burn wards or the burn units in almost every teaching hospital mm. of the country. Mm. But there they are providing just the basic thing. They are not uh, practicing these advanced uh, mm. burn practices. Mm. So the state of the art burn center is this. So mm. we received a lot of referrals, especially from the KPK mm. and from the AK, Azad Kashmir area, Gilgit, Baltistan, mm. and from this, uh, you can say, uh, Punjab, uh, Northern Punjab side. Mm. And uh, we have a lot of uh, patients coming from all these areas, and, and, and there's a very long waiting list for the reconstructive surgeries. And for that matter, we have now uh, uh, submitted a very comprehensive plan for expansion of this burn center to the government, which government is taking up, and uh, hopefully, inshallah, the construction work will start soon. And then this will be about 70 bedded facility, and mm -hmm. then we will be able to treat more patients. That, that's, that, that, that I'm actually that is happy very to know that uh, you're doing yeah. so much work with yeah. regards to physical management, yeah. because I do feel as a psychiatrist that uh, we have very limited facilities to deal with the psychological impact yeah. on the patients who yeah. develop post-traumatic stress disorder and mm. severe depression, anxiety, mm. and face these arousal and avoidance symptoms again and again. Exactly. Mm. So I do feel that a lot of work needs to be done. You know, uh, Shabnam, uh, in UK, in US, and other countries, there are a lot of support groups and support supportive yeah. counselling going on for victims of burns, group therapies and, and all that. Yeah, and Miriam, also, you know, one thing that I feel that our society, we tend to have the sweep things under the carpet syndrome or the ostrich syndrome. Yeah. We will tend to not th talk about something with the, I don't know what the reason is, but in the West, you see that people are much more comfortable okay. in speaking about nearly everything. Yeah. So how do we change the mindset for people to say, you know, okay, I think one, you know, maybe I might be wrong, but maybe 50% of a problem can be, you know, you can feel better once you start talking about it. Absolutely, Picasso's. When you just don't want to acknowledge or in denial and you just, you know, how much of that... Uh, Shabnam, as a clinician, my suggestion, as a psychiatrist especially, would be like, you know, WHO has established a strategy for prevention of suicide, which is called STOPS. Mm. What they've done is that they've engaged the gatekeepers. Gatekeepers mm. are people who people in rural areas actually come into contact with very frequently. Mm. Like, you know, the Malvis and the mosques and the, uh, the system that they have of these exactly. tribes and the mm. tribe heads and everything. Mm. Educating those people and starting mm. from the grassroots level, mm. educating the, you know, for example, midwives we mm. have for maternal, mm. maternal mm. care. Mm. So if we educate people who are sort of the leaders of these people in rural areas, mm. maybe that is an approach that can sort of form mm. a collaboration between the rural and urban centers yes. and get them all the help that they need mm. uh, in terms of uh, psychological first aid, reaching the homes instead of them going out and facing the stigma yeah. all by themselves. Mm. And then educating educating the families. Mm. And then of course, as Doc Sab keeps on mentioning about prevention, I also believe yes. that it's basically the predisposing and the perpetuating factors which do not let a person come back into are we, we a, are we a preventive nation <laughs> not as such because we say Allah ki mardi si we are not we are not the, I mean some of my friend abroad they, they say they hear of such a I mean bold people over there they just cross the road like anything I mean they just don't care that the traffic is coming from this side this side they just start moving. Mm -hmm. it's such Doctor, a daring people. Even burns yeah. as a crime yeah. can be prevented. If somebody, a woman comes in with domestic burns mm. as a result of repeated crime, mm. so-called crime, mm. I mean that could be something that could be prevented, prevented. Yes. by obvious clear punishment mm. to the people who are responsible. Of course. And to send that message that this will not be tolerated. tolerated. Absolutely. And we need those harsh punishments. Exactly. Uh, for somebody who has not only going to go through such excruciating, you know, trauma, but physical pain as well. And in that, I, I must mention that uh, Pakistan is the only country uh, where we, through a very long process, uh, uh, I mean, uh, through legislation and all those things, for these acid burn, uh, they establish a double capital punishment. Mm. Although the international societies and all those, uh, I mean, NGOs and all that they oppose it, mm. that it should not be the capital mm. punishment. But after implementation of that capital, twice mm. capital punishment, mm. and there will be no uh, sort of uh, uh, relief to them, mm. uh, there's, there's a You've seen decline, a decline. decline. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So, they, 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 so they, of course, they, they these are all deterrents. Yeah, these deterrents, are all those things deterrents. that you employ, employ. In, in a network to, you know, uh, to protect the vulnerable yeah. people who are out there. Uh, okay, um, Dr. Tarek, you know, you, you raised a very important point. You spoke about schools, schools sensitizing children, <coughs> bringing them towards, because I know one thing that when my children were younger, 
they were so impacted by what the teacher had said yeah, that they, they would come home to me and if yeah. I said something they would say to me no yeah this no. is yeah we can't do this like this because our teacher, teacher said this said. so the teachers are able to yeah. shape you know, <coughs> mold those children's yeah, exactly. brains so why aren't our schools doing enough I mean how are we having first aid programs what is yeah there are I mean doing some camps or doing some activities off and on that is not the solution it mm. should be a regular part of the curriculum mm. I mean children can have the sketchbooks mm. they can draw a sketch that this is this is a this is the electrical appliances this is hot this is that we we don't we do not uh, need to go near to that thing exactly. and th this is dangerous mm. so sort of starting from those things and then uh, telling them it can make a lot of uh, impact on the mm. you know, prevention kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Which, was, uh, which is something which is uh, very amazing because yes, yeah. my daughter has been privileged to be a part of a school which is a good s school system. Mm. But in grade four, she had a chapter on burns. Mm. And the next time I burnt my hand while uh, making roti, she's telling me, mom, you have to wash this with soap and water. This is a scald. <laughs> this is, this yeah. is going to turn Amanda. into a blister. And I was yeah. really impressed because she knew first degree, second degree, and third degree burns. Exactly. So this is the stage in which yeah. you're sort of yeah. implementing it as a part we of the hard disk. And, and children, the information that children have, number one, they uh, absorb things like a sponge, and then their their, their ability to retain it and yeah, yeah. actually implement it is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, the stories of the tsunami that Absolutely. took place, and uh, a young girl who was she was seven years old, I think, she was on the beach, and she saw that the water had receded and it had started bubbling or something, some of the signs of a tsunami, and she told her parents, her father, that. This is what we just, you know, we yeah. read about. at school, Absolutely. and this, this uh, tsunami is going to, get, it's just going to happen. Yeah. And he looked at that, and there, I think there were about 200 people on the beach. Yeah. They raised that alert, and all those people were able to. Yeah, and Shabnam, with yeah. regards Safety. to schooling True. and education, of course, the prevention and teaching them about burns and how to avoid is very important. But another thing that we need to educate about our children about is if somebody has undergone some kind of a disfigurement. Mm. Whether on the face or any exposed part of the, mm. we need to talk about bullying in children. Oh yes, exactly. <coughs> Disfigurement, stigma, and bullying in children. Mm. Yeah. And we need to tell them that if somebody is facing such difficulties mm. because of something that has happened, some mm. mishap that has happened, mm. how to sort of counteract that? That is also another emphasis that we need to make in schools. Very, very important one because, as we just said, you know that these a disfigurement is of course uh, is going to cause so much negative attention. Uh, when you just have a child with a slight difference, or maybe something that you can't even see, children tend to bully that person exactly, anyway. Exactly. So um, they are, Teaching, of course, oh, uh, very, very vulnerable. Yeah, exactly. Dr. Tharik, we need some first aid tips from you. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the daily routine yeah. um, you know, activities that go on in, a, in an average household. Cooking, burns, somebody burns themselves with a, with a hot liquid. What yeah. is the first thing they should yeah, do? Yeah, the very first thing they should use is the tap water, not the cold water, but the tap water. Just okay. put that area, if it is hand or the affected area, mm. under the tap water and just rinse it till it becomes a, a little bit, they will feel a relief in the pain and also because it's a very painful thing. Mm. And then what do we, if you have got any kind of first aid uh, like polyfex, some kind of uh, cream or ointment at home, just mm. apply that, mm. wrap that area into a clean, uh, uh, it will be better if it is wet, clean mm. clothes and just okay. rush to the hospital. Right. Uh, we hear a lot of people saying, you know, you have the myths and the facts and things like that. Yeah, Sort out honey, those honey, for us. honey, uh, yeah, and toothpaste. Apply honey, toothpaste. You hear a yeah, toothpaste. I mean, is it just... <laughs> <laughs> is it is that would just have the it's sort not of the doing menthol anything in bad, it? But, uh, yeah. well, it's not recommended basically. Okay, uh, yeah, okay. but, uh, you can just have to wash it with the water and right. just uh, keep it clean and then mm. uh, uh, okay. try to reach to the hospital. Right. So the best thing is then to just uh, uh, just normal tap water, no, normal tap uh, water. whatever has been burnt, you yeah. just cool that down and then wrap it in wrap a wet cloth, did wet you say? Cloth tissue, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, so that's um, with a hot liquid. Yeah. What about uh, someone getting burnt because of steam? Is that scalding? Yeah, th that is the same, same again, thing. you have to cool down the affected area, okay. steams, flame, and even for the chemical burns, if some mm. chemical has spillover, like mm. uh, toilet bleach and, and all those things, you mm. have to wash it very thoroughly. Mm. Except for the electric fire, where mm. you don't have to put the water, because then you have to switch off the uh, main source and, and all mm. that. Otherwise, for everything, you have to rinse it and wash it with the water till it becomes cool. Right, okay. Yeah. Somebody whose clothes have caught fire, yeah. or hair has caught fire, yeah. how do you yeah. control and that? In that case, when you have to, uh, I mean, uh, in, in, in that case, if the clothes are being burned or the fire on the body, mm. then one should fall down mm. and just start rolling. 
and uh -huh. so that uh, it can it can be stopped and somebody if it can help then some kind of cloth or blanket and anything just wrap that person into that so that it can be stopped and just again putting a water mm. or mm. if you have something uh, fire extinguisher kind of thing those mm. those can be used here which is another exactly. thing that i'm so uh, glad you mentioned i think every uh, every kitchen should have, should have, have a fire should have extinguisher, fire extinguisher. Yeah. Uh, if we had a survey and we would ask the average you know household how many people do you think would turn up with a fire extinguisher in their kitchen very very rare i don't think i don't yeah. have one either I, I have never <laughs> been to a house in Bangladesh, including my own i mean yeah, that's that's what I mean. I agree because with that. that is the norm we we we, we built a house of billion billions of rupees but yeah, these are the basic we will not invest yeah. in that, that. Yeah. absolutely we will not invest in that i have never been to a house in Pakistan. Doctor has given me good food for thought I yeah think well, I, I think i'm going to do that small too small cylinders available yeah. now there are uh, preformed medicated blankets are available uh -huh. which I, I i advise to everyone because now they are available mm. that one should have in their fridge in mm. there because they are cooling cooling devices kind of thing okay. and you just have to peel off the packing and it uh, and then uh, wrap that thing on the affected area mm. and nothing else has to be done mm. because that is that is carrying everything i mean the pain relieving and the damage control and, and everything mm -hmm. those are the things that are available uh, what, what are these called sir these are called burn care gels burn care ha, gels burn okay care gels there's a lot of uh, i mean three four kind of things they mm. are now available mm. and uh, they should have these are uh, emergency rescue ambulances mm. uh, at many places i have uh discuss this thing mm. that they must have this thing mm. because that is the thing which which we start controlling the damage as well exactly. because uh, the uh, shifting of the time of that patient from the site mm. to the uh, hospital mm. uh, they, they, there'll be no more damage and he will be comfortable mm. because there'll be no more pain mm. and those are the things now available and we one should i mean uh, um, uh, aware of those things and in, in a situation you know like that when you have an accident or something it, you tend to see different people reacting in different ways according to their personality exactly. or whatever, whatever however they are but him how, how um, in panic situations what should a person do if something happens you know a, a, an accident a disaster what are the guidelines in a panic situation what should they do right then instead of just reacting all of a sudden uh, definitely, Shabnam, it is a complex interplay of factors uh, affecting the person before the injury, your stress coping as well. I mean, if it's happening to the person, him or herself, he, they may not be in a well, in a cognitive state, which is well enough to even react, mm -hmm. they will then to panic. And the family, of course, tends to panic even more. So I do believe that when you're talking about priorities, the first uh, priority would be to rush them to the hospital mm -hmm. for all the medical treatment that they need. And uh, uh, as a psychological treatment comes in as a next step. So in a panic situation, this is something that deals with how a person's personal capabilities to cope with stress is. Mm. So if somebody who is already sort of uh, has precipitating factors which deal with uh, anxiety and poor mm. stress coping, they of course will tend to panic more. Mm. Especially if it's regarding our own children or somebody. Mm. That's a situation in which we can't help ourselves. You can't Emotions help yourselves. are much stronger. But the problem is that, you know, in that panic, a person tends to cause more... Absolutely. Harm to the situation. And too many cooks exactly. spoil the broth when exactly. everybody wants to exactly. give their advice. The best thing would be to uh, reach the help of a doctor and a specialist and mm. the burns unit that is mm. uh, nearby, if available. Mm. At least first aid care, physical yeah. care uh, is, uh, I think, exactly. what's important. So I think uh, for as a public uh, message, if something like that happens, even if somebody who is just a third person out there mm. should call for help. Yeah. And uh, that is the most important thing yeah. in a situation yeah. like this. Right. Uh, Dr. Tariq, uh, blisters, the formation of blisters after a burn, how should they be uh, taken care of? Yeah, they should not be broken by, uh, I mean, by, a, uh, by the patient himself or by somebody because when they reach the hospital, then under aseptic condition, then we treat them. Mm. We do not remove the dead skin from there. We just uh, aspirate the fluid and then we use that skin as a biological dressing and then we mm. put a few things on it mm. and then the next day these are removed in the operation theater mm. because if we try to uh, puncture them then we introducing the infection right so it's not advisable to puncture them mm. yeah. tell us about hypo and hyperthermia in yeah case. hypothermia is actually common in children especially mm. in uh, small children because uh, what happened that this is this water again mm. when when there is uh, some area especially the chest or uh, upper body that has been burned 
and the mother or the father, they are putting a lot of water on that. Mm. I mean, there should be a limit to a water mm. and that mm. can lead to hypothermia. And then the pain, when, when they are on the way to the hospital, mm. that pain, that can lead to uh, uh, disturb the whole mechanism and that can lead to uh, the hypothermia. That's why the treating the pain is also very important. Thing. Very yeah. important yeah. indeed. Uh, Dr. Tariq Iqbal, uh, Dr. Maryam, thank you so thank much you for much. being with us here today. There, it's it's such a vast subject. There's so much uh, a person can talk about, but unfortunately, yeah, due exactly. to time constraints, yeah. uh, we sort of touch the tip of the iceberg. But yeah. um, as I said, very very informative for our viewers. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank it was very informative much. for me, uh, hearing a lot of things from Dr. Tariq. Exactly. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Okay, so we've come to the end of today's program. Hope you found uh, you know that informative. I certainly have learned so many things today and you know the main thing is that we're talking about health and we say it again and again health is wealth prevention is better than cure these things may sound cliche but they really really do define a person's life the, the way they you know your quality of life so why not be assertive and why not care for yourself and your loved ones with just a little bit of effort in the right places until next week stay happy stay healthy bye bye